While Alex was finishing up the sills last week for the house, Steve was getting some plywood pieces ready for a mock-up of the house sides. Casey is on hand to help with that. They'll get that put together today, and later in today's episode, Steve and Satchel will make up and install the bronze tie rods that go around the house. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you did, but in either case, thanks for watching. Well, I finished framing everything up in the stern of the boat. Alex worked on fitting these sill plates here, and these are what we're gonna build the house on top of. So the house is gonna go up from these, and then the decking will come up against these. And right now we're gonna do the house side mock-up. Uh, we gotta figure a few things out before we get too much farther. So we gotta screw down the sill down into our deck beams here. Uh, we also need to put in the port lights and we need to put in bolts that go down through the house and lock all of this together. And we have to make sure that the screws aren't in the way of where one of those bolts are going to land and the bolt isn't where our port light's going to land. Uh, and the easiest way to sort all of this out is just going to be to put up some plywood and do the mock-up and lay out where the port lights are going to be. We can figure out where all the fasteners are going to go. And then when we go to actually build the house, which unfortunately we're gonna have to wait a little bit and let the weather warm up to be able to do the gluing, uh, we'll have a perfect template and we'll just strip build that house right around that plywood. And that mock-up will essentially end up becoming our mold. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's grab some plywood. It's all cut to length and we can start playing with some heights and some shapes and seeing what looks good and how we wanna roll. No, it does not catch the curve, but it gives us some semblance of an idea. Although that I like where that port is. <laughs> so just in case you don't know, these are pieces taken off of Victoria, a similar but smaller boat that Steve and Casey are going to use just to take a look before they cut any plywood. How tall are you? I'm uh, 5'11". Okay. Well, everyone, everyone lies about that. I'm probably 5'10 by this point. Gravity <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is taking its... Well, I'm just thinking, so if you're 5'10 and there's an arced roof, then like someone who's like six foot would have full headroom down the middle of it. It looks like it, uh, yeah, it's pretty close. center. <laughs> does that look? I think that's probably even taller than it needs to be. Because Akin is saying six foot headroom underneath the deck beams. Well, I got more than that. Yeah, definitely more than that. Right. If you stepped on furniture, you could see all of the foredeck. Now for the actual size model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would be looking at it a bit over. For me, I think if they came down a little bit, but yeah. Because like there, I can just see the deck. I don't want my toes to see the deck. But, and then this is nice. This is like face height, right? We also should probably uh, put some decking on the back and go sit in the cockpit and see what it would look like having the house blocking all your view when you're trying to steer as well. Right. I think. I think if we keep it to that height or a little bit lower, I think sitting in the cockpit, you won't have any issue at all. And that, you can see, uh, it clears my head fine. I could pull a, yeah. a hatch. You could even go, keep going up. I mean, now you're starting to obscure it a little bit on the sides, but still up forward. I don't think you'd block it at all. The sides are just going to be strip built as one huge structure. Yeah. Um, so if you were to take the house apart, like you really wouldn't, you would just rebuild the house. Like the whole thing right. would come off as one unit. Right. And I think I want to build the roof for the house the same style. So to make the strip, strip build it yeah. and glass it. And then if you ever needed to do any major work, 
you can go through and undo some fastenings and take the whole roof as like one laminated curved structure right. and take it off and leave the house sides. Yep. And then if you wanted to, you could take the house sides off. And if you wanted to, you could leave the roof on the house sides and take the whole thing off. Right. Um, would kind of, I think, be the ideal setup. Um, and if we do that and strip build the, um, the roof for the house, we don't need to put in as many um, beams. We can put them where like the hatch is and where the traveler is mm -hmm. and probably call it quits at that. Mm -hmm. um, it won't need as many as if it was like a, just a straight laid timber one, mm -hmm. uh, which will make a lot more headroom down below right. and shed, I don't know, a little bit of weight. The beams aren't light. Uh, and I think I want to, since the decks are so wide, there's so much room, I think I want to bring the roof over like a little bit of an overhead. Maybe like an inch and a half to two inches. Yep. Not huge, but I'm hoping that it'll be enough that if you were at like a calm anchor and it was raining, that you would be able to open the port lights without, without you know, at least on the lee side of the boat yeah. or something right. and not have the water be coming in. Right. Or splashing back off and up in. Yeah. And hopefully have it far enough away. Yep. Are we, what do we think of the curve? Going port to starboard. Do you want to keep that curve? Do you want to lessen that curve? Do you want to increase that curve? I like how it is. I like how dramatic it is. Um, and I think that's fairly traditional as well. Um, and, you know, and of course, on Victoria, they had a flatter deck to compare it to. So it was more dramatic on Victoria than it that's is true. here. And trace that curve out. And then we could always make like one or two curves that are more domed, yeah, start are. with cut out the more domed one, yep. put it up, yep. and then maybe we could put the lines facing, you know, so that we could see them and be like, oh, actually, I think like the second line down might be, yeah. might be nicer. Yeah. And I guess if we get the forward end figured out and the aft end figured out, then that would just make the sides. Yeah, you, the, just it, it would tell the sides what to, to do. To what to do. Yeah. yeah. I think I like the big ones. <laughs> I think we have that unanimous on, everyone's unanimous on that one. I mean, that will give you a much better view. Much better view. A lot of light. And man, you open those things up. Yeah. Wind blowing right Wind on blowing through. Right yeah. On through. I think those lights, I mean, they're not going to be cheap. Like, 15, 1600 bucks by the time like taxes and shipping, but it's the I, only port lights we're gonna buy for the boat really. And yeah, and I think those up forward, they're gonna make a huge difference. Huge difference. So it's kind of a big cost, but I think it's, I think it's worth doing. Pretty good, right? I mean, there's a lot of headroom, and uh, more than uh, either of you guys will need. But oh I think god, it's, yeah. Uh, it's not, a, you know, it's not getting away. It's not that far above the shear, and it's lower in the front, which is nice for water. Uh, no, I think it looks good. It's cool. It's like definitely starting to seriously define the space. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can drop it that inch and a quarter with 
without like visually messing anything up. Okay. Um, I got the plywood if you want to do the clamps. So then that means the next step is to do the sides. The last panels we put in are going to have to get cut. I cut them to the longest opening, not accounting for the thicknesses of the plywood. Yep. Figuring that when we were down to the last sheet, we could take a much more accurate measurement yeah. and nibble a little bit off. Um, but we could take the two long sheets and put them in the stern and mm -hmm. butt them up against the string. We can get that screw figured out if we do it that way. Start with the stern. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to hit this bolt here. So I'm just going to go hack out a bit of a channel there so it'll fit around it. It doesn't have to be anything pretty. And then we can get this one clamped in place and do the same on the other side. And then we'll just have the little pieces to fit and I'll have a real good idea what the house sides look like. that notch for a reason. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is feeling weird now. It's like <laughs> legit. We cut these off, it's gonna look cool. Yeah. No yoga in here. <laughs> uh, where are the actual where the actual Yeah, it kind of does. And I think with like the diminishing side of the house, it like, it doesn't look like it's terribly out of place. No, I actually, I think I like it a lot. Okay, so that 
gives us 22 inches would be there. I just moved them both in an inch, give us a little more room at the mast. This is cool. Yeah, and I think what I might do is just take some pine or something and make like two beams that go across. Yeah, go straight across so we can tell kind of what the roof line is gonna be. Yeah, well I was thinking one, yeah, two to go port to starboard. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we can like put a batten or something or a thin board up across the top. Mm -hmm. But I was also thinking about kind of framing in a little bit so that when we go in and out of the companionway, it's as close to what it's actually going to end up being with like how far over the door is and like how much you have here on the side and mm -hmm. like what you're touching and grabbing. Nothing like super heavy duty or crazy. Oh, you mean framing out this? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think by the time we put the gussets on the seams uh -huh. and put like two cross balls going across and like something down the center attached to either end and attached to the cross balls, I think that that'll pretty much be what we need to stiffen it up. I think even just having these corners screwed is going to go yeah. tremendously. Yeah, I like the idea of uh, I'll pick Satchel's brain tomorrow. Yeah. They don't have to be excruciatingly perfect. Like you're honestly, other than a hundred something thousand people seeing it now, you're not gonna really see them in the finished product. <laughs> good thing these sides go on and off pretty easy so we're gonna take them back out um, we got them set up and I'm really happy with how they look and we're gonna leave it and live with it for a while uh, and make sure that we really do like the house sides and the feel of it all um, but we also need to put in all of the tie rods and we thought that it might be less effort to figure out the sides without having all of the tie rods to contend with and then we could drill through the sides for the tie rods, take all these sides down, put the tie rods in, and we have perfect locators for where all the bolts are gonna go. And we can take a bigger drill bit or a hole saw and ream those out. And when we put the sides back on, it'll float nice and neatly over all of the bolts. So that's the plan. Uh, we got all the bolts welded, all the tie rods rather, they're all welded. Satchel's working on drilling them for the bolts. 
So I'm going to take these sides off and then the last thing we'll have to do is check those for length and thread them and do the install. And I think we're on track to get all of the tie rods in the house made and installed today, which I'd be pretty happy with. If we get that done, we just have the cockpit and the fore and aft hatch. And that's not really too many at all. So, cruising along well today on this rainy, rainy Saturday. <laughs> Well, Satchel and I got all the tie rods put in for uh, port and starboard here along the house, and that is the lion's share of them, so I would call that a good day. Uh, we still got to go through and put the washers and nuts on them, but I think that'll be a good project for tomorrow morning. And then I just got to do the tie rods for the aft hatch, the fore hatch, and the cockpit, but that is two, four, six, eight, ten more, which is not really a big deal. We did almost triple that today. Um, so. Time for some dinner. Let's blow this taco stand. I dumped a whole handful of bronze nuts into the bilge. Oh. <laughs> Find them later, maybe when we're cleaning. <laughs> I was working on an aluminum boat, but the owner was lived in fear of dropping anything copper into the bilge. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> Just you know, hold on. Yeah, it will literally. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, Steve and Alex will get the house sides back up and they'll finish a mock up of the cockpit to go with it. Thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, and supporting the project. And see you next week.